Connection displays are great, but the documentation and the support is not very good and the library currently does not work with the ESP32. Today I will show you the 5 most important features of the enhanced version and how to use them. In the end you will have a small keypad which can be used as a control center for your home automation. And of course the library works now with the ESP32. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. I did already some videos about Nexion displays. They are the basis for this video and worthwhile to watch because I will not cover these details again. You will find links in the description. Today we will build a small device using a Nexion display with six soft keys. When one of these keys is pressed, the beeper on the extension board will beep. You will learn how to achieve this by programming the display itself. Each key triggers a MQTT message. This message can be used to switch devices in your home automation system. The device can receive MQTT commands and switch a relay accordingly. The enhanced version has a real-time clock aboard. We will synchronize this clock once using Internet NTP time. From then on, the display updates the time itself. Nexion displays are a good combination of a screen and a specialized controller. Creating beautiful user interfaces without too much programming is easy. The enhanced version has more power and also an additional board with a buzzer, 8 GPIO pins, 6 buttons and an LED. The library was also extended to use these new features. As shown in video number 56 and 59, you have to create a firmware for the display itself in addition to the sketch on the Arduino or the ESP. This firmware is designed by the so-called Nexion editor and was explained in the previous videos. For this project I use a 400 x 320 points picture which includes 6 buttons. To show you how to use the built-in real-time clock, I add a text field where the actual date and time will be displayed. To be able to read the button presses, I have to add so-called hotspots to each of the buttons. The hotspots have names and IDs from 2 to 7. And now we come to a function of the enhanced version. Here you see something new, PIO7 equals 1. This is code for the Nexion display itself and it says that GPIO7 on the extension board has to be set to high when we press this hotspot. By the way, this is the pin of the beeper. If we go now to the touch screen release event, we see PIO7 equals 0. This command turns the buzzer off as soon as we release the hotspot. And this is the effect. All hotspots have the same programming, but before we have to tell the display that GPIO7 is an output pin. This is done at a hidden place. If you go to page 0, you see pre-initialize event. This part of the code is called before everything else. And here we configure the different GPIOs to either input, output or pulse width modulation. The first number is the GPIO, the second is 0 for input and 2 for output. The third parameter is always 0. Quite simple, if you found where you have to put it. Now we can compile the display file and transfer it to the Nexion using an SD card. Also this process was described in the previous videos. The Nexion can be connected to any microprocessor which has 33 volt serial pins. If we want to debug our sketches using serial monitor, we must not connect the display to the standard serial pins, because it would create a mess. Fortunately, the ESP32 offers three serial connections. You cannot use serial 1 without watching my video number 152. This is why we use today serial 2. Now we go on to build and adapt the ESP32 infrastructure. First we have to install the Nexion library. Please copy the folder itlib 
underscore Arduino underscore NextGen from my GitHub to your library folder. Please do not use the library from IT itself. I had to change a few things. Next you do the same thing with the NTP time ESP32 library. It should also work for the ESP8266. Also you have to install a standard PubSub library. Go also to the directory you installed the ESP32 support and there to the course directory. Here you open hardware serial.h and add these two lines at the bottom and save the file. If you installed the ESP32 support files in a different place you have to adopt this path. All definitions for the serial connections on the ESP32 are included in nextconfig.h. If you want to use the sketch with an Arduino Uno or an ESP8266, you have to watch video number 63 first. Now you are ready to rumble. Please open the example file called Nexion Enhanced. From now on, we will use this file for the rest of the video. I will walk you through the sketch and show you how you have to use the different features. I will not go into the details because you can use this file as a running example to start. First an overview, otherwise you easily can get lost. Arduino sketches have three parts, preparation, setup and loop. All of the different features of the NextGen display need coding in these three areas. I tried to list the most critical lines of code for each application in these charts. We will go through four different features, display handling, NTP and RTC handling, GPIO handling and MQTT handling. By the way, this sketch should also work with a standard NextGen. If you do not have an enhanced display, you comment this line. Let's start with the display handling. In the definition part, we need the NextGen library and for the ESP32, we have to define hardware serial 2. Then we have to initialize all objects used before in the NextGen editor. They all look similar. They have a name and use the page number, the ID number and the name to fix a relationship between the object in the sketch and on the display. Let's look at the six hotspots. They all get a name and we see here our IDs from before, ID2 to ID7. And all are on page 0. Now we have to tell the ESP which hotspots it has to track. In our case all 6. If we forget one, this key will not work. The next 6 functions define what has to be done when a key is pressed. The name of these functions is XX push callback, where xx is the name of the hotspot on the screen. In these functions we do some printing and publish the number to MQTT. All six functions are more or less the same. In setup we initialize the display. This function also contains the initialization of the serial connections. Next we have to attach the functions we defined earlier to the hotspots. Also here if you forget one, this key will not work. The loop does not need a lot of stuff for the display handling. Just one line, next loop. This function monitors the serial connection from the display and makes sure our callback functions are called if a key is pressed. This is all for the display. Now let's continue with the clocks. We synchronize our RTC with the internet time and display it on screen. To prevent an overload of the serial connection, we only update the time if a key is pressed or latest after 60 seconds. If you do not want to sync the RTC, you comment define NTP. I will not cover this function in detail. Now let's continue with the GPIO handling. In the preparation space we initialize next GPIO and give the ports and port mode name. This is not necessary but good for the maintainability and the readability of our sketch. The display supports three main GPIO modes, input, output and pulse width modulation. We define two pins, the relay port as an output and the 
Enter button as an input. All GPIOs are connected to this pin header and most of them have an additional function. For example, GPIO 6 is also connected to the LED and GPIO 7 to the beeper as we saw before. In setup, we have to initialize the needed ports, similar to pin mode in the Arduino. You see, we do not need to define the beeper pin because it is entirely controlled by the display. The last part is the handling of MQTT. This is very similar to other sketches. We need the Wi-Fi and the PubSub library and have to define the topics. I use three topics, two sending and one receiving. Next we have to define the callback function, which is called if an MQTT message arrives. Here the LED or relay pin has to be changed according to the content of the payload. Then we do some Wi-Fi and MQTT preparation and define which characters have to be sent by each key. You can replace these definitions by your own messages. You could, for example, change key 1 to heater on. This will become the payload for the MQTT message. And we have the publish function, which sends the message to the broker. In setup, we have to establish a connection to the broker and subscribe to the command topic. The loop is very simple. Just insert client.loop. This function keeps the connection to the broker. We reach now the end of the sketch. We compile it and connect the TX pin of the connection with the RX2 on the ESP32 and the RX pin to the TX2 on the ESP. If we now press a button, we see lots of messages in serial. Most come from exchanging the time. But we see also which key was pressed. And if we go to node red, we see the MQTT messages coming via the broker. When the device is switched on, on topic keyboard slash service and later on with the topic keyboard slash key. If we connect now this output to our home automation, we can switch lights or other stuff. We still have one point on our to-do list. We wanted to switch a relay which is connected to the expansion board using MQTT. I attached the relay to pin 6, which is also the LED pin. Like that, you quickly see its state. If I inject now a 1 to MQTT in node red, this payload is sent with the topic keyboard command to the ESP and the LED and relay is switched on. Similar, if I send a 0, it is switched off. Of course, I would like to create a small housing for this new remote control. But as you know, my current 3D printer is defective and the new is still not delivered. So I have to wait. I could also imagine that this device with a bigger 7 inch screen to be the control center of your overall home automation in your living room. At least your friends would be impressed. Then you would maybe add a few more pages on the next gen for specialized purposes as we saw in the previous videos and I plan to replace the ESP32 with a small Arduino without MQTT, but connect it as an additional keyboard to my PC. Summarized, we built a small device with six soft keys on the screen. It could easily be extended with more keys on additional pages. Each key, when pressed, beeps the beeper on the extension board for feedback. This is entirely done by the display without ESP intervention. Each key triggers an MQTT message and sends it to the broker. This payload can be used to switch the devices of our home automation on or off. The device can also receive MQTT commands to turn the relay on and off. We were able to use the device's real-time clock. Using this RTC does not make a lot of sense if you connect it to an ESP microprocessor with an internet connection. But if you plan to use a board without Wi-Fi, this is a handy function. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.